Hello. Hello. Can everyone hear me now? Hello. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ndombi Kumede, and I'll be teaching Natural Sciences Grade 4 for today. I'm pleased to meet all of you. As I can also see your responses on the chat group, which I really appreciate. If you can't hear me, can you please indicate? so that I can fix that problem. Okay, um, next slide. We, on week four, um, below it's my social media contacts. If you need to contact me in terms of the lesson or in terms of grade four natural cells. Oh, okay, I'll raise my voice, sorry. Um, below it's my social media contacts. If you need to get contact me anytime, I'll be available to assist with your learner's questions. Today's topic is, can you guess, because last time you did meta and materials, you were looking at states, uh, different states of meta. So for today, we will be picking up on water cycles. So today we'll be basically focusing on water cycles. I'm glad that most of you know what we will be doing today as I can see from no wonder that there's water cycle as well as Zoe. Um, at the end of the lesson, Lena should be able to describe what a water cycle is and then they should be able to define different key terms as there will be new terms that, that they'll also be learning so they need to be able to identify them and be able to understand them and how they are used in context. And then learners should be able to apply and demonstrate knowledge through the different activities that they will be doing. And lastly, learners should be able to identify and describe different relationship or different parts of a water cycle. If I'm moving too fast, you can just indicate for me. And then from there, we need to recap so that we see if our learners still remember what you did the last time. So from the previous lesson, you did different states of meta. Do you still remember those states? The first one, yes, someone is saying yes, they still remember. Can you please mention them? Yes, solid. Yes, no one that that's good. Okay, liquid, correct, correct. I see a message from Zoe. And I also see another message that's saying guesses, correct. And from there, you know that solids, for example, we'll be looking at ice cubes. That's a good example. Liquids can be what? An example of a liquid. I already gave one for a solid that it's an ice cube. So an example of a liquid, what can be an example of? Yes, perfect juice. I see that in the uh, chats that there's this juice, correct? Coke, yes, perfect, Susie. And then gases. Now, one example of gas. One example of gas that you can think of. That this one, yes, steam. When you boil water, when you boil water that's Theme that comes out of it, which we often refer to in science as water vapor. Yes, perfect air. The air that we found in the air. And as teacher, the learners looked at the change of state. You discussed the causes of change of state to say what can change a solid to a liquid and also what can change a liquid to a gas and then we also looked at heating and cooling as well as them having an impact on the change of state because now if the temperatures are high or if heat 
is increased, then that can result in the change of state. And then you also participate in them, which was very fun and interactive to the lesson. Moving on to the lesson. Sorry about that. Okay, keywords for the lesson. Number one, remember one of the lesson objectives is that at the end, you should be able to identify or know the keywords. So the keywords list, number one, water cycle, which is our main topic. Number two, groundwater. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to say, what is a groundwater? When someone speaks of groundwater, you will be able to I, uh, understand what they mean. And then third word is evaporation. I know this is not the first time that you hear the word evaporation. And then you have condensation. That's another key word. And then precipitation. And then the other key word is runoff. Often they refer to it as surface runoff, but we'll use the word run off and then lastly transpiration so those are the keywords that you're supposed to know at the end of the lesson and then now there's there's two pictures i don't know if you're able to see them there's two pictures on the screen there's this first picture here and then there's this first picture a uh, second picture with the gentleman that is holding a glass now I'm posing a question to you. What is the picture showing you? Why do you think uh, I'm showing or displaying those pictures on the screen? What is the picture sh showing you? You can type your, your responses on the chat. I'm able to see them. What is the picture showing you? These two pictures have something in common. And that's, a, yes, I see a response. There's water. Someone also is a respond, responding. Monique is saying water or a liquid. So now let's look here. Now in the glass, you can see that there's water. And there's someone that is drinking water from this jug. How old do you think the water in the jug or glass is? Or how old do you think the water that this boy is drinking is? Okay. Responses sound is saying new. How old? New is not a number. Fresh water. Okay, five seconds. <laughs> okay, someone is saying the water is five seconds. Hmm. Let's see if your response is okay. Someone is saying eight, one second. No. Let's see how old, nine seconds, the water is. Okay. Actually, the water that we drink, the water that we use every day of our lives has been on earth for millions of years ago. So it says here, did you know the amount of water on Earth now is about the same age as when the dinosaurs lived on our planet? Wow. How possible is that? How, what, how, uh, how is it possible that the water that you just have taken from the tap is older or the same age as the dinosaurs. Now we find out how, what happened for this water to be this old, okay? Here it says, invincible water vapor in the air cools and condenses to form drops of water. And then this happens when water evaporates and when water evaporates it means that when there's heat when the heat warms up water surfaces 
Remember the water surfaces are in a liquid state. So when the heat warms up the water surfaces, it causes the water, it causes the liquid to change state. To change from what? To change from a liquid to a gas in a form of water vapor. And then when this water vapor, this is now a gas. When this water vapor gets into the air, it cools because it was warm from the sun. It cools and then it condenses to form what? Water droplets. And then you'll see what those water droplets, as we go on with the lesson, you will see how those water droplets can or are recycled back into the land or back on to the earth. When the water evaporates, it cannot be seen anymore as become a gas. It cannot be seen anymore. Remember, we cannot see gases. For example, we know that in the air, there's oxygen. There's air that we breathe in. And there's air that we breathe out. And, and then we cannot see this air. It's invisible. And then it's gas. So this process of water always changing from a liquid to a gas and back again. It's an ongoing process. It, it's continuous. It happens constantly. And then definition remember one of the lesson objectives it's very important to always go back to the lesson objectives to say at the end of the lesson you are supposed to know what is the definition of water cycle so what is the definition of water cycle the water cycle is the process of water moving around between air and land. So the water will move from land to the air and then after it condenses and then it will go back to the land. And then often in scientific terms, the water cycle is the process of water evaporating and condensing on planet Earth in a continuous process. Here, this process has been happening. Now we go back. Some of, uh, of the responses, they were saying, what? How can the water be so old? So here it, it says that this process has been happening continuously. When we say continuously, we, it means that it does not stop. So therefore it happens continuously. And then it means that if there's no water, if this water does not continuously recycle, there would be no life on earth. Yes, I see a hand there, Andy, sir. Yeah, and this I can see there's a hand. You are welcome to ask your question on the chat box. If there's any question, you can ask there on the chat box. Unati, yes. Unati, yes. Oh, Yandisa, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Yandisa, can you hear me now? Okay, and then moving on, steps of a water cycle. Now we know that the water continuously moves from the land to the air. So now we find out how does it do this? How does it move from land to air? What makes it do this? How is the process taking place from one place to another? Step one of the, the water cycle. Water evaporates from Earth's surface, number one. So first one is that water must now evaporate 
for example if you take a glass of water and you go outside on a hot day when you go outside on a hot day and you spill the glass of water outside after a few depending on how hot it is after a few minutes or a few hours you see that where you spilled that water the water is gone and you ask yourself what happened to this water because i spilled water here but the water is no longer there so that is because water slowly turns because it was a, a liquid in your glass once you pour it to the ground the sun because of the heat it heats the uh, the water that is in the ground in the soil and the water will change from a liquid into a gas the process of water remember we already explained the process of water turning from a liquid into a gas is what is evaporation i see very good answers there that the sun heats up the water in oceans then the water becomes gases then the gases from clouds good one there a nice message from nokwanda very excellent answer so that is the first step that the sun must heat the water surface remember we say water surface because we cannot only say uh, it hits the river because water is found as well as in the underground it's found in the lakes it's found in the oceans now the first step is done the water has now changed into a liquid from a liquid into a gas so what will happen now when it gets into the air and it's gas let's see what will happen okay this is a picture of nice evaporation so here this is a nice lake you can see here this is a nice lake and then you can see that this is a sunny day unfortunately we can't see a clear picture of the sun but we can see that it's not at night so the sun will warm up here the water surface and then from there you can see that this blue part is the water in liquid it changes now into what into gas they someone at the beginning of the lesson said an example of gas is steam so there we see the steam now we see the water vapor in the air this is a nice picture so moving on second step now the gas is in the air what happens now water condenses to form clouds so we say condensation we use the term condensation so the second step of the water cycle is condensation water vapor rises up in the sky due to the sun's heat once the water vapor rises high enough it condenses into what into water droplets i can see that most of you are saying it forms mist someone a response from monique is saying it forms clouds so here it condenses after it condenses it will form what clouds here's a nice picture of clouds forming here so these clouds are formed by the water vapor by the gas that comes from the liquid that was changed because of the sun's heat so another keyword condensation so this keyword condensation meaning condensation is the process of water turning from a gas into a liquid I repeat condensation is the process of water turning from a gas into a liquid and then the next step is what 
after the clouds have formed, what will happen? It's a normal day outside. You see clouds. After clouds are formed, what happens mostly? I can see that someone said mist. Okay, very good. Mist can form from the clouds. What else? Yes, it starts to rain. Yes, good answer there from Nogwanda's message. Zoe's as well as D. Okay, perfect. I see very great answers there. So now a question. From the clouds, do we get rain and mist only? From the clouds, do we get rain and mist only? It's a question. So you can just type the response there. No, yes, I see no's. What else can we get from the clouds? What else besides, yes, perfect answer there from Monique. Yes, you can get hail. We can get hail. What else? What else? Yes, there's the answer I was looking for. Snow. So you can get snow. It can, you can get hail. You can get rain. There because of the water that has now changed so the last step because we said now during condensation the gas must turn back into a liquid that's why clouds form so there next step after the clouds have formed water must now fall back into the air remember what is a water cycle it's a process whereby water moves from land to air so now the clouds have formed now this water beca because now it's now water droplets in a form of snow in a form of mist in a form of rainfall so it falls back to the earth as what precipitation it falls back into the earth as precipitation when water droplets get heavy, this is now in the clouds, when water droplets get heavy, they fall back to the earth as rain. And this word, another keyword, this word oh, is called precipitation. Because we cannot say that a uh, after the clouds have formed, uh, the water will fall back in a form of rain. That is not the case because sometimes it can fall back in a form of rain, liquid. Remember rain, liquid. It can fall back in a form of snow. What is snow? Frozen. And when something is frozen, it's what? It's a solid. And then it can also fall back as hail. So we use the word precipitation instead of just saying rain or snow. So instead we say that the water falls back in a form of precipitation. And there's a nice picture of it. There's rain there showing precipitation. And then precipitation in a form of those different types of states, snow, rain, hay, brings water back to the earth and the cycle, what? Repeats. Remember, it's an ongoing, it's a continuous process. Now the water is back on earth, the water must then go back again on air and then it starts to evaporate. That's why we call it a cycle. It happens, it's an ongoing process. It happens continuously. And then after now the water is back on earth. What happens to this water? When it rains, what happens to this water? What do you see happening to the water when it rains? You can type your answers there. What happens when it rains? When you see it raining, what happens to the water when it gets to the earth surface or when it gets on land what do you think happens to the water
Okay. Someone is saying the water dries up. Okay. The water dries up. If there's sunlight or sun heat, the water dries up because evaporation is starting again. And then a response there from Kyla, it turns back to a liquid. But water now comes from the clouds as liquid. What happens to this water? Let's look at what happens to the water, okay? When precipitation falls in a form of rain, snow, hay, it may fall back into the oceans, lakes, or rivers, or it can fall on land. It will either soak up, that's why most of you are saying it dries up, it soaks up, the soil soaks up that water, and then when this water gets soaked up by the soil, it goes underground. Wow, that is nice. The a precipitation falls in the form of rain. When it gets on land, it soaks up. And then when it soaks up, it goes underground. Remember, there's the word groundwater. There's the word groundwater. And then in other instances, the plants, remember we have plants as living organisms as well. The plants use the water through the roots. Animals use water to drink. So this groundwater can be used for many things. So you see that water is very essential. And then this is the groundwater. And then sometimes the water, as I mentioned, that some of the water falls back to the oceans, lakes, or rivers. There, when it gets to the less cycle, will start again. And it means that evaporation must occur. And then the cycle starts all over again. And then I have this nice diagram to show you guys what a water cycle looks like. So here, the blue part represents water. This is, you can say it's an ocean. There, blue part, water. There's also water here on land. And then here, it's your sun. And then the sun heats up the water surfaces. It heats up the oceans. It heats up the land. And then after it heats up this water surfaces, evaporation occurs and then the evaporation is represented by these arrows the red arrows they represent evaporation remember what we said is evaporation evaporation is when water changes from what is when water changes from a liquid into a gas and then it's in the air the reason why we don't see it it's because gases are invincible. And then once the gas gets into the air, it condenses. There's your clouds forming, clouds forming. And then these clouds are formed from the gas that came from the water surfaces. It condenses. After it has condensed, there your clouds form, and then it forms water droplets. Now, these water droplets will fall back to the air through what? Precipitation. 
that precipitation can be rain, it can be snow, it can be hail, as we've already explained. So you see these arrows, they show that this is a cycle because after precipitation takes place, the water surfaces again will be warmed up and then evaporation occurs. So this is just a nice diagram to show what happens during a water cycle. And then I have this nice video that I'm gonna play for you guys. It doesn't have any audio, so I'll explain as well using it. So there's a normal day. You can see there's the water, the sun rises. Can you see the blue part? Evaporation, clouds are forming. After the clouds have formed, what happens? This is condensation. Condensation occurs. There's a nice picture of condensation. Very nice. The clouds are formed. Wow, there's precipitation. Precipitation falls. There's precipitation in the form of rainfall. So in this video, they're using precipitation as, uh, they're using rain as a form of precipitation. This is a very nice picture. You can see that this rain goes there to the ground. The brown part here is the soil. So the rain goes there underground, ground water. And then there's runoff, surface runoff. This is the water that you find flowing in the road, in the soil. And then this runoff goes where? It goes to the oceans. And then there you can see that the oceans are also getting filled up with water from the precipitation. Water from what? Water from the rainfall that comes from the clouds. This is a very nice video. It shows what happens nicely during a water cycle. Let's see. Yes, still raining. Still raining. Wow, you can see it's about to clear up. The rain is stopping. Okay, precipitation has stopped. What will happen next? Because now there's water in the ground, there's water in the oceans, there's water in the surfaces. So it means now what must happen again? Evaporation must happen again because this is a what? This is a cycle this is a what this is a water cycle so there's a nice uh, video that showed the process of a water cycle and how it occurs i hope you enjoyed watching that video okay moving on to so now we've learned about the water cycle we've learned about the different states Number one, evaporation. State number one, evaporation, liquid changes into a gas. From there, what occurs is what? Condensation. With condensation, what happens is that uh, the gas must change back into a liquid. And then from there, we have what? Precipitation, meaning the water must fall back to the earth surface through rainfall, snow, hay, and other forms of precipitation. And then the last step is what? Collection. Collection, it means that the water goes back to the oceans, the groundwater, so that it can be recycled over and over again. Now we have a better understanding of why water is so old because most of you gave 
nice responses at the beginning of the lesson. So now we get to understand that actually water gets recycled over and over again. So now we are testing ourselves. Let's test if the lesson was fruitful. Activity one. So using a scrapbook or whichever book that you have with you or a piece of paper, you are going to draw a water cycle. So I used just the nice picture to demonstrate how you can start. So you draw a water cycle and your water cycle should have labels. It means that you must label that this is a tree, this is a soil, this is a sunlight. So you label your water cycle and then from there, yes, you can start. I can see there's someone asking if they can start with the activity. Yes, you can start. And then from there, you can just explain in your own words what you think formed the rain in your water cycle. So I'll give you just a few minutes. You are most welcome to post your answers on the hashtag STEM digital. I'll display it after. I see there's a hand. Yes, Ceci. There's a hand there. You can ask a question. I'm looking at the live chat. There's another hand. You can ask questions on the group chat. I'll be able to respond in the meantime while you guys are writing your activity. So you can use colors, make it colorful. You can use brown for the soil, blue for the water, whichever color. Let's get creative and see. Remember that you have to apply the knowledge. Apply the knowledge. Oh, so she's asking, what is a water cycle? Okay, while the others are busy with the activity, a water cycle, it's the process whereby water, in simple terms, water moves from land to air and from air to water. So basically, it's the change of water from liquid to water vapor and then from water vapor to a liquid in a form of precipitation. It can be rain, it can be snow, it can be hail. I hope I was able to answer you nicely, Ceci. Okay. If you are done with your drawings, you can just indicate. Yes, I see there's another hand. You can ask on the group chat. I'll be able to see. You can ask in the group chat. I'll be able to see and respond while you're busy with the activity, while the others are busy with the activity. You can get creative with your drawings, make it nice, make it colorful. Okay. I can see there's a response. Okay, there's a question from Unati. There's what is acid rain? So acid rain happens when there's pollution, basically air pollution. The different gases that come from companies, that come from cars, that are harmful to the environment. Once they get to the atmosphere during condensation, they can cause the water droplets to become polluted. And then it means that the water that falls down in a form of acid rain can be very harmful to living things such as plants. Okay, I can see there's a few people that are done with the activity. I'll just wait for two, two minutes and then I'll post the corrections because I also have a nice diagram that can show the different types of drawings. Okay, I'm so happy that people are done with the activity. 
Okay. Okay, most people are indicating that they are done. I'm hoping to see your pictures on this hashtags. You can use uh, your parents um, or guardians uh, devices as well as your devices to post your pictures and just tag me on those social media tags that I included. And then you can also use hashtags STEM digital school as well as hashtag lockdown e school so that I see your nice pictures. Yes, I can see that people are also responding to the asset rate. Yes, correct. Basically, um, humans we are causing pollution and therefore it breaks down the layer that we call the ozone layer. And then when the ozone layer breaks, it means that the sunlight, too much heat can pass through and then this heat can also damage us as it can cause a lot of illnesses and also cause uh, plants to also undergo very um, difficult conditions as they will not be used to those type of climatic conditions. Okay, my, there, your pictures can look like this, your drawings can look like this. There, water cycle, there's a nice picture, evaporation, there's blue water, and then sun there, there's condensation in the form of clouds. And then you can see that precipitation falls back into the rivers in a form of rain. So this was just a simple picture that I got that can show. Oh, sorry, this is just, oh, Ceci, can you hear me now? Because I can see that it says you can't hear. Okay, Unati, I'll type the email address as, as well. It's also on my first page, the first page of the slide. The email address is also there. So the steps, you could have said that steps, sun's heat causes water to evaporate. And then from there, the water vapor rises into the air. Higher up where the air is cooler, water vapor condenses into water droplets, which form clouds. And then when the water droplets in the clouds get bigger, some of the water falls as rain, snow, or hail. And then in scientific terms, because it's natural sciences, we use the term precipitation. And then from there, some run of water falls to the ground and then flows down to the rivers as well as the seas. And then from there, once it gets there, the water will evaporate again, and then the cycle continues. So this uh, slide will also be available on the links that will be provided so that you can visit it again and be able to use it. And then as well, and then there's a fun activity that you can do at home so that you see how a water cycle is operating. So here's a fun activity. It says making a model of a water cycle. Wow, this is nice. So you get to make your own water cycle. So the first activity you what? You drew the water cycle. So now what you do is you simply make a model. Wow, this is nice. It's hands-on activity. So you make a model of a water cycle. So here you can make your water uh, models and then as well post them on the side. So here it says what you need. You can get assistance, a big plastic bottle. It can be a bottle of Coke, a bottle of juice. Yes, Yandisa, you can ask your question. And then you also need water. And then you also need a brick or something 
to balance on. It doesn't have to be a brick. And don't hurt yourself with the brick. You can ask an adult to assist you with that. And then the instructions are there. So what you do is you put about a cup, only a cup of water into the plastic bottle. And then after you put water into that plastic bottle, you must close the lid of that bottle. Yes, Kyla, this is homework. So it's a fun activity. So this is homework. So you, from there, after you put a cup of water, you close the lid of the bottle. And then step two, you rest the upper part. So the brick that you have, you rest the upper part of the bottle on top of the brick as shown in the diagram. So I just made nice uh, diagram so that you can see how it must be. And then from there, you leave the bottle in the sun for about 20 minutes outside. And then from there, you must observe what happens. Only after 20 minutes, then you can go and observe. And then you answer questions. I'll also provide links on the uh, site as well as on the group page terms of the activity. So the questions will say, from the model that you designed, which part of the model is like the C? So which part represents the C? And then two, which part represents rain falling from your diagram? And then three, which part is like river flowing back to the C? And then number four, you will just say, what do we call the process? You just give the weight, the process where water turns into water vapor. And then five, can you see how the water in the bottle is going through a cycle? And then you just write down the name of the cycle. Okay. So now to wrap up my lesson, Remember that water is very essential. Therefore, we need to save water. So we need to be able to save water so that this water can be able to last us years to come, generation to generation. Okay, Unati, I'll just type now, now the email address so that you can reach me. And then I have helpful links. You'll also be able to access these links once the slide has been posted. It will show nice uh, explanations of the water cycle and you'll be able to see what happens. So hopefully you join our next lesson tomorrow. Same time, it will be very fun. We'll also have nice and fun activities. So thank you for tuning in. See you next time. So this is my email address for the ones that want to reach me. I've just posted it on the chat. Thank you so much. Bye.